Today's topic is Dhamma, the second treasure. Dhamma literally means natural withdrawal of senses. But if we do not understand it clearly, that Dhamma becomes a kind of suppression, repression, reaction. And that is not good in the life of a seeker. So what we have done, when we use the mind, what happens? It is always impulsive, instinctive, habitual. It is seeking a comfort zone. And then what happens? The life moves to prayers. What I like, what is pleasant to me. When we use the mind, or you say that when the mind is working on us, it makes us over busy, overactive, or lazy. You know, we will understand and link it with the Raju and Tamo Guna later. You know, simply listening, you know, we have three Gunas. <coughs> it doesn't work that way. So when we use the intellect, it comes forward, takes over the mind, and then we start living in Shreyas. Uh, now I think you are familiar with these words. Shreyas, what is right and good. And that is a knowledge. We all have an intellect, I feel, I suppose. So if we use that intellect, that shines with the knowledge. First, and that knowledge is testified by Viveka, the discernment and dispassion. Our topic, main topic is to how to become a seeker. And the seeker always succeeds. Now have you seen the fox and the birds make a lot of noise? But a, when a lion roars, everyone becomes calm. They run away. A seeker is a lion who roars. How he roars, that is very important. Always keep that knowledge in the mind. Ah, so when people say they are number one, the seeker says, I am one whole reality. We don't run in the race to become number one. We are already one inside. Are you getting it? I am one whole reality. I am the real self. That knowledge instantly shines. Now see the opposite. You become number one, someone take over your place. So you are always scared. <laughs> And when I'm one reality, one whole reality. Uh, those who know the computers, you know, the hard drive needs defragmentation periodically. I learned it from my son that you have to defragment your hard drive periodically. Why that means defragmentation so that you have an empty space. When the hard drive becomes unorganized, when it becomes unorganized? When the mind is working on us. So defragmentation is required. That is what we are becoming a seeker. We need a defragmentation of the mind to have an empty space within to realize that we are essentially one reality. This knowledge should never be taken over by the impulsive nature of the mind. And once that happens, we wake up in the morning. Why should I promise the Eastern wisdom of our master promises that you are settled in calmness? 
Thus that seeker never feels that he is divided between, between the stress and the silence, between the suffering and the solace. This is what is this discernment and this passion. Self-inquiry. Do you remember self-inquiry with discernment? Simple inquiry. Uh, science is doing a simple inquiry. They don't know anything about an object when they discover. They don't have any confusion. We have a lot of confusion that who am I? Am I the body? Am I the mind? Am I the intellect? Am I the ego or something else? So that to remove that confusion, we need self-inquiry with discernment. Another point that needs to be thought of when you start thinking. When we say the real self is unknown, it does not mean that it will never be known. What it means? It is unknown means it is yet to be known because we do not know. It can be known. You know, when you say unknown, you know, when we use the word unknown, Okay, when it cannot be known, then why should I make an effort? Then you cannot become a seeker. Another point that we have understood, the knowledge in the intellect, behavior in the mind, follows by six treasures. So when you follow discernment, knowledge shines in the intellect, it breaks the knots of likes and dislikes. It breaks the knot of pain and pleasure. It breaks the knot of uh, that blame, complain, and reaction. So that leads to dispassion. Uh, that is what we have understood. So the knowledge and the behavior, we start bridging the gap between the two. So when you bridge the gap, there is still misalignment left. And that misalignment is taken care by the six treasures. So that is what we are learning. Six treasures of the mind. Now understand another point. Six treasures of the mind and mind by default. There are two ways to understand the mind by default in modern life. What is that mind by default? Uh, blame, complain, reaction to become number one, uh, creating uh, just anger, hesitation, overactive, over busyness, etc. That is one way to understand mind by default in the modern life. When we understand mind by default in Eastern wisdom, I'm just giving an example. That natural state of the mind is 90% made up of Satoguna, 7% made up of Rajoguna and 3% made up of Tamoguna. So now how to understand that? So when we say that mind by default in Eastern wisdom is made up of Satoguna, it means 90% mind by default is seeking knowledge and happiness. So when the knowledge seeking happiness, your mind withdraws with it. It is natural according to the Eastern wisdom, but it is unnatural according to our modern mind because we seem to be more intelligent than our masters. Now see that when the Rajo and Tamoguna, Rajo Guna means likes, dislikes, activity. Tamoguna means opposing the right knowledge now that is what is now 90% in the mind. And that is the cause of all our suffering in our life, anxiety, duality, conflict, etc. It's a long list. So, so there is a misalignment. So Sama is the first treasure that we have covered last week. Sama means peace inner calm, equanimity, mastery over the mind. And what is this mastery over the mind? Simply the mastery over the ways the mind is thinking, mind is expressing. 
So Sama filters out likes and dislikes. Sama filters out blame, complain, and reaction. So you have that confusion is gone now. What is that confusion? You are responsible for my stress. That confusion is gone. So what happens to the mind? That mind starts, I'm responsible for my confusion. Let me examine, take over, relax. That is why the Sama is the first stressor. Sama is the first stressor. So just think of it. Inner calm, equanimity, mastery over the mind simply means the way I am thinking. If I am thinking in line with the knowledge, what is right and good, where is the problem? Where is the problem? I uh, studied one uh, research paper long back, I think 15 years ago. I, it was published in Japanese journal. They said that we are always in hurry. We are always busy. And then they studied those people who do the things with the relaxation and calmness. That is what the Sama is. They are able to do, complete their work much faster than those people who say, I mean, no, 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 I have to rush and I have to do all these things. Long back, I don't remember the nature of the, that paper where it was published in Japanese journal. Now come the Dhamma. Dhamma is changing the perception by senses lovingly if I define that. Dhamma is a practice where you change the perception of senses lovingly, not by force. Many people translate Dhamma as sensory control. You cannot control the sense organs. How? Say for one example, the mind says, I hate you, anyone. Example, now I close my eye, can the hatred go away? <laughs> hatred is still there. Mind creates that image of hatred, even if I don't see you through the eyes. Very important to understand. It is not a sensory control. How can we control eyes when open and perceive what is in front of my eyes? My eyes are open, I see everyone. Can you control your eyes seeing me when your eyes are open? No. By default, I see. So first thing to know, so go a little deeper. We always see, look into our mirror. So that mirror is one-sided. The opposite side is opaque. That's why I'm able to see. Same way. These sense organs are one-sided windows. They do not open inside. They always open outside. Mind is working behind the senses when we perceive anything recognized by the mind. How it is recognized by the mind? By a thought. I see you. And then what the mind says? You are Kate, you are Lara. But without the sense organ, I do not recognize. But everything is processed by the mind. First thing, sense organs open only to the world to gain knowledge. That is why senses, that is what we say perception. Five sense organ, five objects of perception. I'm not going there. Now ask your eyes, do you like someone or dislike someone? These sense organs are neutral. Who makes it crazy? Mind. The mind gives the interpretation. Do you see that? I don't want to see his face. Why? Are you special? 
it is the mind that is giving the interpretation so sense organ first thing are one-sided windows they are used for as an instrument of knowledge but it is the mind that gives the interpretation so the mind in the sense organ their relationship needs to be understood and so that we can have a dhamma sense organ do not know likes and dislikes pain and pleasure profit and loss divorce and marriage they do not know it is when the mind gives its interpretation based on its own likes and dislikes then we color our sense organ and this coloring is craziness this coloring is blame this coloring is reaction this coloring is over busyness this coloring causes the pain and the suffering in our life so this coloring one way to say this is misalignment between the knowledge and the behavior and that misalignment between the knowledge and the behavior is removed by dhamma did you get it did you understand it because we have always been working as a seeker we have been working on the mind by discernment and dispassion and sama now comes the dhamma even if the mind is relaxed now and the mind hates someone who appears in front of you so there is a relationship between the sense organ and the mind that is why the dhamma is required how to do that what to do that ask yourself should i close my eyes if someone comes home i hate or love not possible because the it it is the content of the mind do you see the misalignment sense organ perceives the objects of the world by default mind gives the interpretation so what is that misalignment between the knowledge and the behavior removed by the ma question comes how to apply this discernment and dispassion so once we have applied we realize that still i have those moments of reaction blame and complain how to get out of it so dhamma is here so what dhamma we say dhamma cultivate new habits and replace old habits that is the solution what it means we cultivate new habits in the mind and replace old habits what it means we channelize sensory perception that is dhamma but senses are active during waking state there should be something in the mind to change its perception did you get it let me repeat it for solution is to cultivate new habits in the mind old habits to be replaced we means what we channelize sensory perception is the ma- do you see that how deeper the eastern psychology is compare it with any 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 treatment given in modern psychology so we channelize sensory perception i'm changing my way of presenting because we have to uh we all are seeker but senses are active during the waking state there should be something in the mind to change its perception practical example i see you what it means by channelizing i see you mind says mind hates mind dislikes or mind is attached what it means by channelizing here can you think of it
it means I am not seeing any object or person or thing or any event for my desire fulfillment. Then what should I do? Another step of channelizing. I see everything in the world manifesting from the real self. That is the highest state of Dhamma. But what is the practical way? How to change that perception? Let me give you a lot of examples. There are hundreds of examples. Have you seen the images of goddess? We have a goddess of wealth. We have a goddess of... Huh? Goddess of knowledge. We have a goddess of power. Many beautiful images of women. Epitomized as goddess of wealth, knowledge. Image of a woman. Image of a woman in a bar and in a temple. Image is the same. Women is the same. Channelize the sensory perception. That is why we have, I would say, 33 million gods and goddesses and their images. Instantly, we say goddess of knowledge. Does your mind trigger a sense of pleasure seeking? No. That is what the channelizing is. Now apply this in your daily life. The moment you wake up, you see and meet every person. Can my mind perceive? Can my mind perceive through a thought, through a feeling, not for desire fulfillment, but uh, as an epitome of that existence, that real self. And you will see in a week the mind changes. Whether it is your honey outside, whether it is your son or a daughter, or a teacher or anyone. So the mind releases the idea and the impression of desire fulfillment and it is replaced by knowing that reality is pervading everywhere. Put an argument that I am better, what I am. That is what you are better, days after days, months after months, weeks after weeks. We are doing the same stuff. Honey, you don't agree with me and I don't agree with you. My perception remains the same for 30 years and up in divorce. My mind perceives differently with the likes and dislikes, reaction, even though you are giving me benefit, but because my mind has a wrong channel, what happens, the time comes, I break up with you and later on I repent because I am not being benefited by you. This is happening every day in our life. Powerful Dhamma. That is the beauty of this Dhamma. Sama, we have learned relaxation, calmness, mastery over the mind means the ways of the thinking. So when we have ch changed the ways of the thinking, then we use that different pattern of a thinking that Everything I perceive through the sense organ is a 
manifestation of that real self. I channelize. So what happens? Now your sense organ perceives the beauty. I'll give you one aspect. So there is a literature that there may be around uh, uh, maybe around 50 or 60 books that so to channelize that there these text speaks of the word upasana we will talk about it in detail but i just gave you a practical example i used to go to my workplace in india from my whole house in a bus in early days long back i would say in 81 82 83 84 85 i used to travel by bus i used the one mantra shantoham and while sitting while sitting in the bus i used to sit got a ticket and i used to do it shantoham 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 but looking the piece in shantoham what I said, cultivate new habit, replace the old habit. I did it for at least three years and after three years, after I think five or six months, my eyes are closed, but my mind triggers me. Now, next stop is your office. I used to open my eyes. The mind has become so much huh, aware. so much aware and I never knew how many people sit in the bus what is it I did it for at least three years shantoham, shantoham. one day we will do that karmala practice it is known as karmala so this is one example of upasana uh, we will uh, go a little deeper into the upasana but uh, understand upasana upanishad the word means sitting nearby real self one is peace, one is calmness, sitting nearby the teacher, sitting nearby the real self, sitting nearby the peace, sitting nearby, who is sitting nearby the mind? Shantoham. So internally, maybe you can try, then we will do, you can try, mind says, I hate this guy, I dislike this guy. So when that guy comes before you or girl comes before you, Internally, you try shantoham, peace, cultivating new habit. Why it is harming me? So we'll understand this upasana uh, in detail in our next session. Let us start our practice now. Eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Body is steady. Body is steady. Very good. <clears throat> and mind is looking inside. Do you have the hundred percent knowledge of these three words? If you have it, <clears throat> there is a discernment. What is that discernment does? It filters out the activities of the mind. That mind says, no, I'm today, I'm tired. And no, 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 it, dis it changes. <clears throat> it changes that pattern. That is why I have been saying, my friends, Body is steady, you are aware. Mind is looking inside, you are aware. Very good. And then, eyes are closed gently. Two. Three points. Without knowledge, I should not do the practice, especially in meditation. And when my goal is awakening, I am a seeker. Then mentally fold the hands in Namaste Mudra, mentally. 
Sam explained beautifully, sternal notch, both the tip of the tongue, thumb, five sense organs, five motor organs. So the mind goes in the middle of the palm, middle of the palm, the center of the palm is the space. Ask the mind to be there, not to get carried away by likes and dislikes, reaction, etc., etc. Become aware of that space. And every day, why not do the practice every day? Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Go to the knowledge, may there be well being for all. You'll be surprised that we are being becoming selfish to realize that if the well being is there for all, it is one reality. <clears throat> that wisdom should prevail in the mind at this time. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. May there be well being for all. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. May there be peace for all. Peace for all. How can you say peace for all when the mind is dictated by the likes, dislikes, blame, complain, and reactions? So we are cultivating new habit. Did I tell you that I give the practice before we discuss these topics? Now think in this way. Oh, this is the way. <clears throat> I have to do nothing. Whether the person is good, bad, high, low, whatever, number one, or number two, mind, you are one. How? Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Look at it. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu. Completeness. When I feel the sense of completeness, when the mind is not crazy, seeking desire fulfillment outside. Sense of completeness in me? It is with reference to real self. Be very clear. Don't get dictated by the mind. Okay, you know, if I'm completed myself, then how can I, if I'm hungry, should I not eat food? That is a crazy state of the mind. We are not saying that. You are doing everything as whatever you are doing, but your perception has changed. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Let there be auspiciousness for all. Peace, well-being, completeness, when they are felt in the mind, with reference to the real self, you are cultivating new habits. It will replace the old ones. And we have been doing the, with the, living with the old ones days and days, weeks and weeks, months and months, without any change. Now the time has come to break that. In that state, in that state, the second step becomes being comfortable. So we are not going into detail as you used to go move the mind on all the joints of the body from the neck joint. We will keep this step for a few more sessions. And after that, the mind will replace its habit of being comfortable. We will remove that step. So moving the mind on all the joints of the body, 
sensation, comfort, steadiness, space. I need not to say what is after sensation, comfort and steadiness. Is there space? And what will happen? One day mind will recall, oh, I am already in Namaste Mudra. And here the meaning of Namaste is not me. What is not me? My false nature. We'll understand that. So am I separating? Yes. Am I in discernment and dispassion? Yes. That leaves you in a perfect, comfortable state in meditation. And later on, you are always comfortable. Always in thought, in speech, in action. Think of that way of living your life. And then, so now see that the second step becomes now being comfortable and carefree in a deeper level. Being carefree, free from all the cares of the mind. Have you realized by discernment and dispassion that these thoughts, they come and go like the traffic on the highways, like the birds flying in the sky, like the salesman who knocks the door again and again. I gave many examples. So when that knowledge is settled by discernment, dispassion is there. What is dispassion? Thoughts are coming and going. Let it come and go. Who cares? Who cares you? The mind in dispassion says, who cares you? Mind in passion says, I will take care of every thought. Every thought? Yes. Then I become crazy. I become lazy. I become reactive. I have a blame. I have a complaint. See how the first step becomes the second step in a deeper level. Very good. So now we will go for removing what we said, impurity of the mind. You have already realized what is impurity of the mind today also with reference to the perception by the senses. Okay, I have realized. So let us do quick, short, gentle, playful breath from the rib case only. Either you look inside the rib case or the heart, at the center of the heart or inside the forehead, doesn't matter. And start breathing quick, short, gentle breath through both the nostrils. Just continuity is there, rhythm is there, the mind is not interfering. Uh, it does not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath once you have that rhythm. And then what will happen? You'll have an equal flow. You have a deeper experiences of tingling, numbness, freezing, colors in the vision. Let them come and go. You continue. Just continue as if you have started the journey. Focus inside the head or the heart, body is steady, you are carefree. How you are carefree? You are not listening to the mind. You gained a clarity. That's why you are not listening to the mind. No worries. Continue.
Just continue, quick, short, gentle breath. The expansion and the contraction of the rib case is rhythmic now. Why it is rhythmic? The mind is not interfering. That you know it, and when you know it, the mind says, okay, now I'm defeated. I can continue as long as you wish. You are the winner. That is an active way to know the mind is, I'm working on the mind. There has to be some active way. The passive ways will work at a later stage. Continue. And stop this first thing to check flow of the nostril, flow of the air in both the nostrils. If they are equal, the mind is already living with. These are fewer indications. Yes, you keep looking at the flow of the breath from both the nostrils. Another experience, you have a deeper sensation, relaxation and stillness in the body. You may have an experience of calmness and a quietness, calmness and quietness in the, in the body. Do you still remember body is the servant of the mind? 
Now body is totally steady, doesn't want to buzz. What happens to the mind? Mind lives with it. Look at it. We'll be holding the breath for 15 seconds, inhaling for 10 seconds. You already know it. So let us start. Inhale deep, silent, slow. Totally silent breath. Retain the breath inside. Look inside the heart. Sarve sham swastir bhavatu. Let there be a well-being for all. Remove the mind inside. Perceive the state of the well-being. Release the breath. When you release the breath, recheck equal flow, sensation, relaxation, stillness, calmness and quietness. Yes, you know you are progressing. Why should I say that you are dependent on me? Teacher makes you, teacher in the Eastern wisdom, always makes you independent. Inhale, deep, silent, and slow again. Ten seconds. Retain the breath. Sarve sham shantir bhavatu. Let there be peace for all. peace, good space, the mind continues to move within and then release the breath. So we release the breath. Just wait, do nothing, check, flow off. The breath is equal. You are in a state of sensation, relaxation and stillness and the mind is living within. Maybe in the Pose of Namaste Mudra mentally. Yes, inhale deep, silent and slow. Very deep, casually. Ten seconds means longer breath. Retain the breath. Look inside the heart. Sarve Sham Puranam let there be completeness in all everything is complete in itself we should have that perception in our life and release the breath check breath flow is equal you are still in the state of deepening sensation, relaxation and stillness, calmness and quietness. You recognize that, yes, my mind is living within. In spite, I may have a lot of thoughts. Then what? We already understood that part. In the second step of dispassion, inhale deep, silent and slow again. Inhale deep, silent and slow again. Retain the breath. Sarve sham pu mangalam bhavatu. Let there be auspiciousness in all. And maintain your awareness when you release the breath. The mind says, I'm okay. Whether you retain the breath or release the breath, it doesn't make any difference. What means? Mind is working on you or you are working on the mind. You now become very subtler. You have a very subtler perception in your life. So that will help you to have a very subtler perception. And that subtler perception will introduce Dhamma in your life. We just discussed. And now inhale deep, silent and slow. Retain the breath. Look inside the heart. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. 
can you live with that knowledge that there is only peace only exist release the breath if the peace only exists what happens to your mind are you getting it an example of dhamma cultivating new habit replacing old ones One more time, inhale deep, silent and slow. Ten seconds. Retain the breath for fifteen seconds. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Release the breath. Check, equal flow, sensation, relaxation, stillness, calmness, quietness, infinite space. Maybe other vision and colors appear. Let them come and go. We'll pick up later. Does the real self has any color or not? Does the consciousness has any color or not? One more time, inhale deep, silent and slow for 10 seconds. Continue, 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 continue and retain the breath. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Release the breath, check. You already know what is needs to be checked. And same thing, now with a normal breath, leave the active step, look inside the heart, space, point in the space, drop, Om Shanti 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 And then wait So every time you wait, you see as if the mind is going deeper and deeper and deeper in search of that real self. Pick up a point again in the space inside the heart. You are aware of a point. Om Shanti. Mentally, um, Om is real self, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And then weight, flow is equal, body is steady, mind is living within, very good. You know, you'll be amazed to know that what... Uh, the Buddha says mindfulness, object less state of the mind. Are we not moving to the objectless state of the mind? It will only happen when the mind stops moving, merges, melts into the real self. So we are doing it consciously. We know what is happening. That is the beauty of the meditation practices we do together. We don't leave any point of unconscious or habitual pattern to enter.
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Did you realize I did not say do nothing now? That I always used to say. Why I said so? To introduce that Dhamma. Can you still continue with that Om Shanti Shanti looking inside? Cultivating, replacing. So it will work for that purpose also. Shanti 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 Bring your awareness on the right hand Your awareness on the left hand Raise both your palms Place it on your eyes Open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down. How are you, Kate? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Good. Real. Very peaceful, very quiet. Very quiet, Lovely. very peaceful. Beautiful, wonderful. How are you, Christina? Good morning. Thank you for that session. That was beautiful. I really enjoyed, um, or I really liked how you reminded us to of cultivating from those old habits as during the practice after the breath work and retention. I had a flush of a the old feelings of anxiety and I felt like I was almost gonna like I got very sweaty and I felt like I may have thrown up but I knew that those were the old feelings and then just accepting this new piece and knowing that I'm it yes. felt good so I'm really enjoying every day of I like it together. So Christina every time you evolve the way you explain this is wonderful how are you David and Jerry Um, you know, I just found it very simple, I guess is the best word, very easy, very deep. The short breaths has become remarkably simple. It's just, it just all of a sudden clicks as soon as we started and I have zero struggles with it and then just peaceful. The rest of it, my uh, meditation, it was wonderful. See that, see that. I have been telling simpler the practice, higher it is. But even if it is difficult practice, it becomes very simple to you. That tells the nature of evolution of the mind. Beautiful. How are you, Jerry? So it was good. It was good, good space. Just really good space. And um, like Christina, I, uh, I like the takeaway of cultivating and replacing and channeling habits. Because yes. I, mean, I think it, we have to, right? We have to. Yes, yes, Jerry. That's a beautiful. We have to. If we don't do it, we remain the same. Beautiful. How are you, Lara? The meditation was good, but then the, I also had all of the old crap come up really, really big. So it wasn't so peaceful for me. I mean, I was able to stay in the meditation. But I'm going to tell you, like, all the shadow stuff came really, really big today. And so um, it was challenging. And yes. I questioned myself a lot. Am I even able to do this? Yes, so. yes. But what is most beautiful part, the way you narrated, that you continued the meditation. So there was one state of meditation on one hand. And you are able to discern all the crap on the other hand. So gradually what will happen, this crap will not dominate you. So you are the winner. <laughs> you are the winner. That is how the process continues. 
So you are, you have to be the winner. There is no chance. Why? Because we all are seekers. How are you, Stephen? <laughs> uh, I am, I'm fantastic. Um, I felt that I was pulled into my meditation the second you started to talk. Good. So I, I closed my eyes um, and saw myself uh, between the palms of my hands in the Namaste Mudra. And then when you actually started the practice, I was immediately drawn into my heart. And the practice was simple, quiet, um, extremely relaxing, thoughtless. Uh, and as David said, the breathing part was extremely easy. Easy, um, yes. thir I thoroughly enjoyed it all. Beautiful. You, you, I think it's worth noting the way Stephen is explaining. So do you... Do you see the cultivating? Do you see the cultivating the habit? That point did you note in the Stephen's narration that the moment you started speaking, I was in Namaste Mudra. Can you see that Namaste Mudra to whom your mind has been reacting, even to your crap? And then see what happens. Beautiful. How are you, Vaibhav? Then we'll go to. So I'm relaxed and calm. And uh, it's like my was so calm that now it started falling into sleep. And I realized that it is falling into a sleep, so I don't have to sleep also. Yes. And then I was all, all uh, like my awareness was there, and that, and that situation passed on, and I was totally into meditation after that. Beautiful. Sleep is one of the greatest obstacles in meditation. So we'll understand. Ah, we, I think we have understood. So we will also take up. But what you did is perfectly right. How are you, Terry? Where are you, my friend? There it is. There it is, yes. Um, mine was also challenging, and I... Um, I have the idea of creating the new habit to replace the impression with a different impression. So I just kept... Uh, at one point, I just kept hammering with the own. Yeah. Or we used to do on oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I put, the other thing was not working out, so I just said, uh, I need to uh, attack this thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, that too is good. Not to get carried away by any impulsive, habitual nature of the mind, and because we have been learning many steps, so any step can work. Yes, it should. Good. But know that you are not your body, you are real self. How are you, Ashok? I I see moving lips, but no 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 sound. <laughs> ah, sir, today's practice was very good, and uh, going to go peace. Good. Better than before. Thank you. Very good. So your mind was receptive today. <laughs> that is why the practice is good. <laughs> so any question? <clears throat> But understand, think it over, Dhamma, and uh, majority, I think everyone has got it, cultivating new habits, replacing old, they both go together. So according to Lara, if crap comes mentally, you do namaste to the crap also. Thank you very much. You have come to raise my awareness, now I know you. Please. 
that is one way to say dhamma so we will also understand remind me so we'll understand there is a karmala practice we will be doing it in the next session that is all for today thank you very much be in peace and keep smiling thank you namaste thank you namaste 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 theek hai ji aur prabhu ji theek hai aapka